I'm pretty much the opposite of a VS Code power user, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a few extensions which I absolutely love. So let's go and find out what they are. And just a really quick word before we dive into this and take a look at these extensions, they are listed in the description below as well as their links. So if you are interested in checking any of them out, you can find them all down below. So the first one that we're going to be looking at is Bracket Pair Colorizer right here. And Bracket Pair Colorizer is a really nice extension just for making life easier to keep track of things. Um, so even in CSS, and this is CSS, but if I were writing SAS, which I write a lot of, you might end up with a media query that's actually nested inside of something like this. Um, and in those cases, um, I know things are busted a little bit here uh, because it doesn't understand that, but you can see that this has the yellow brackets on it. Uh, then inside the yellow brackets, we get this section here, which is the brackets that are color coded with the pink there. And then we get the blue ones here. So you can see where the opening and closing is without sort of guessing when you have lots of nested stuff. And this can be even doubly or triply useful if you have um, some JavaScript that you're writing. As you can see here, you always get nested brackets and stuff like that. So it can be really useful. And this also works for, so this is, you know, it doesn't matter what type of um, bracket that you are using. Of course, the browser needs to be happy with what you're writing. So let's just come here and we'll try doing a calc here and see if it lets me nest it a little bit. So if I say calc uh, and then I nest that and then in there I might have a variable. So then I have var and then I have another set of brackets and this would be like color or something. And so you can see like right away visually looking at it, I can find my pairs of brackets. And again, this works in JavaScript. It also works with uh, square brackets. If you're using square brackets, it's not doing it here because it's CSS and it's getting confused. So it just helps you stay organized. It makes it a lot easier to keep track of where you are just visually really, really quickly instead of just, you know, that split second sometimes that it takes you to guess at things a little bit. And of course, it's also made a little bit easier. Uh, if you're missing something here, I can see I have a yellow one and then I have no closing yellow one and I get very confused. <laughs> Um, but you can sort of, it makes it really easy to spot. Like here you can see everything is changed. I have an error and you make a wide way of an error there. And then it might make it a little bit easier to spot and things like that along the way. The next one that we have is my live server. So if you watch any of my videos, you know that I usually mention live server. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, a lot of the time for actual projects, I'll be using something like uh, browser sync. But if I'm doing something quick, something easy or a YouTube video, but whatever it is where I don't really want to have to do an NPM install and get browser sync working and other things like that, Live Server is so nice for quick and easy projects. And the way browser sync works is you just, once you get it involved, it gives you a little go live down here at the bottom. And then you click on the go live and just like magic, it opens it up live in the browser. You can make changes to your video here. So let's just say I delete, let's actually shrink this down for a second. <laughs> uh, so let's just say, all right, we can come up to here and change a color because that'd be the easiest thing to see instead of just deleting everything. And those colors change as soon as you hit save. So a nice, easy way to update everything. I really can't live without this one. It makes my life so much easier. And I like not having to have all the node modules and dependencies and stuff like that for simple, small projects. If you're doing a personal project that doesn't need very much and you don't need that extra functionality of other NPM packages, maybe, you know, it just makes, it just runs, it works. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I really, really do like having live server. Uh, one thing with live server that is very important though, is that you file open folder and you open your root folder. You don't open just your index file. If you open an individual HTML file, it's not going to work. You have to open your folder for it to work. And every now and then, for some reason, when the extensions load, it doesn't load. If that ever happens, I just close my VS code, open it again. And when the extensions do load, it's there. Next up, we have the SVG previewer, which if you use a lot of F SVGs, I would really recommend just because it makes it a little bit easier uh, to be able to see stuff. And these days I find myself using more and more SVGs, even though I don't, I'm not the, the best in the world with them. Um, so here in my image folder, I do have the Firefox logo as an SVG. You click here, you see this and you don't know what you're really looking at. Uh, but when you have this, it adds this nice little guy up here, open preview to the side. And just like that, you get the preview of what your SVG is right in VS Code. So this I find really useful. If you have a whole bunch of stuff, you can just look through them really quickly and see the previews. And you can even zoom in and out and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, and change the background if you find you know you need to. So it's a nice little uh, feature. It just makes life a little bit easier. And isn't that what extensions all about? Everything we're looking at here is all little simple things, but they make your life a lot easier and just improve your workflow along the way. Uh, so I find that really, really cool. And whoops, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, but really, really cool, I find, and super, super useful. 
So let's close those down and head on to the next one. And this one, I think a lot of people will be familiar with, but it is prettier. And if you don't know about prettier, it pretties your code automatically pretty much. And the nice thing with prettier is it works in pretty much every language that you're going to be writing. Um, so let's just say I made a mess of things here and when I was writing it and I don't want to do that, but what I want to do is tab this over and you know, you, you're copying and pasting stuff around your, your HTML is really disorganized. You hit save, boom, it's formatted properly. You have some nice nesting on there. You come to your CSS and you know, I don't know what you're doing. You're copying and pasting some stuff and things were a big mess. And then even here we could do some, something like this. You hit save like magic. It looks nice and pretty again. And the nice thing with this is you can set defaults for prettier for all your projects. And then you can also have project specific codes. So you can make a prettier file that overwrites some certain things that, and the good thing with that is if you're working in a team, you're all sharing your prettier file and that way everybody's code is formatted the same. If you're writing JavaScript and you're working with somebody who doesn't like using semicolons, you can have it add those semicolons every time they save automatically. Uh, if you, some people are writing with single quotation marks, some people are using double quotation marks, it will switch them. For example, let's just see if we do a background image URL and on there I say X, Y, Z, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it added that. Let's do that again. I'll put a single quotation mark and A, B, C. And so it's single, I hit save and it's updating it automatically to be double quotation marks. And you can configure that how you want. If you want it to be single quotation marks, you can have it switch everything to that as well. So it helps just lead to consistency. It helps clean up your code. You don't have to worry about tabbing stuff and on tabbing stuff and all of that. It just, you hit save and it fixes it for you. Super wonderful and super customizable, which is always really nice. Now this next one is one that I only got recently, uh, very recently, which is tag, uh, the auto rename tag. So auto rename tag, it does what it says it's going to do where I don't know how I lived without this to be honest for so long. Um, so if I decide that I don't want, let's go to my header at the top. I decide I don't want this to be my header anymore. I can write section here and like magic, it switched this one down here also. Uh, or I can come on my H1 and this H1 should actually become an H2. Look at that, the closing tag switched as well. And I lived without this for so long and it actually led to me making errors in my code that I've had trouble finding just because I'd forget to change the closing tag somewhere or I didn't realize I didn't change it. You know, this section gets changed to a div or more likely you have a div that then becomes a section or becomes a header. It's just so, so, so nice that it can close or can change the closing tag as well. If you write any amount of HTML, this really is a lifesaver. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend checking that one out. And last but not least, this one is less of an extension, even though it's their color themes are listed as them, but people always ask me what color theme I use. So I use Adam one dark. Um, and yeah, that, that's it. That's the color theme that I, that I use. So I think it looks nice. I know there is one other one that has a very similar name. Let's see if we can find it on the fly here. Um, Adam, is it one dark pro? Yeah, I've heard one dark pro. So I've heard that it's very, very similar, but it's a little bit different. Um, so you could check out one or the other, but they're going to, it's going to look very similar to mine either way, uh, along the way. And that is the theme that I use. So that should answer that question, hopefully for a lot of people, since everybody is always asking me that. And that's it for me. As I said, I'm the opposite of a power user, uh, but that said, I'd love to know what I'm missing out on. So please leave a comment down below and let me know what extensions I absolutely need to get or need to try. If I'm still using a few of the suggested extensions a few months from now, and I'm really enjoying them, I'll make a new video that explores those community recommended ones. And with that, a big old thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing if you aren't already subscribed. A massive thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.